This video is the fifth video in a series on authentication with MongoDB and Angular. So far, our application has complete logging in and signing up functionality with the use of web tokens and also route guards. I'm going to leave the card to those videos in the top right if you haven't already seen them. This video is now going to complete our application with logging out functionality. We're also going to look at how we can save the user details into the browser for automated authentication. I've also left a link in the description down below for the source code. There you'll find a before and after folder. The before folder will contain the code at the start of the video and the after folder will contain the code at the end of the video. So feel free to join in. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. So, so far our application allows us to log in and sign up. Uh, however, the logout button doesn't actually have any functionality. Uh, we can kind of effectively log out just by refreshing the page, uh, but this is actually a bug and we're also going to fix this later in this video. So to provide the logging out functionality, I'll first head to our header HTML file and change the logout button from a list item and into a button. I prefer this way as the button represents an action rather than a destination as the other header items do. I'll also add some styling to make the margin top 10 pixels and this will align our button with the other items in our header. Uh, so next I will add a click listener to a method and we're just going to call this log out. And then if I head to the header TypeScript file, I'll pass on the logout call to a new logout method of the auth service, which we also need to create. Uh, so we're passing a call through to the auth service as it is central to all of our authentication actions. And this will enable us to perform four key functions for logging out a user in one go. Uh, so first we need to reset the token to an empty string. We need to mark the is authenticated boolean to false. We need to emit a new false update on the authentication subject to all listening components. And lastly, we want to navigate the user back to the home page. Uh, if you want to see the video on where we've created these four components for logging in, uh, I'll leave the card to that video in the top right. And now we can check this out in the application. So I'm just going to log in with the username and password. And we can see the header has changed and the edit slash delete buttons appear on our home page. Now, if I select log out, uh, actually we don't see any change. Uh, so the reason we're not seeing a change is because this diary component does not actually use the subject uh, for updating whether a user is logged in or not. So it's not actually receiving that false message that is being broadcasted. Uh, so in my previous video, we did not use the authenticated subscription in the diary component. Instead, we only find out if a user is authenticated through the is authenticated boolean. And as the diary component does not actually reload, the is authenticated boolean is not reset in the ng on init function. Therefore, we simply just need to add that subscription by setting is authenticated as equal to the status, and then we will achieve that desired behavior. So now if I log back in with the username and password, we can see the buttons appear on the home page. And if I log out, that subscription is now going to be received by our diary component. It's now going to update the is authenticated boolean to false and we can now see that they have disappeared. Okay, so our logout function works pretty well so far. Uh, however, it's a little bit more complicated than that. If you remember from my previous video, we also added an expiration to our token to ensure that the user is logged out automatically after one hour. Um, what we would like to do is to trigger the logout function after that one hour has elapsed after the user has logged in. And luckily, there are some built-in handy functions for us to do this. Uh, so first, I'm just going to head to that rest.js file and I'm going to enrich the response from the login function to pass a new parameter of expires in with the value of 3600. And this is going to represent the number of seconds in one hour. Our Angular app can then handle this value appropriately. And back in the auth service, we will update the generic type to receive the new expires in property 
of type number. And then after we've confirmed that the token exists, we can use the set timeout method to call an ES6 function after a number of milliseconds has passed. So for this, I'll pass in a call to the logout function. And this is going to be called when the number of milliseconds has passed. And for the number of milliseconds, I'm just going to pass in the response dot expires in value. And then I'm going to multiply that by 1000 to convert it from seconds to milliseconds. If I were to log out manually, we would also want to clear this timer. So I'll create a new variable for the auth service and I'm going to call this logout timer. And then it's going to be of type any. And within the login method, I'm going to assign this to the set timeout method. And then within the logout function, we're able to use the clear timeout method that is also built in and available with Angular. And I'm going to pass in our logout timer as the argument. So what this will do is clear our timer every time that we manually time out, but whenever we do log in, that elapsed time is going to begin. So to quickly show this working, I'm, just, I'm actually going to remove this 1000 multiplier. This way it's going to log us out after 3.6 seconds. And then if I head back into the app application and I log in, we can now see that we've automatically been logged out and we can see at the top right that the login buttons are now available. So the second part of this video will fix the bug that we saw at the start where our user is logged in and when they refresh the page, they're then logged out. So we currently store the token within the token string of the auth service. Therefore, when we refresh our page, the component is destroyed and the token is emptied. So we see our user is logged out. We'll resolve this by storing our token in the local storage of the browser. So the browser's local storage provides a storage system that allows key value pairs to be stored in that web browser and without an expiration date. Therefore, when the browser window is closed, the local storage will be persisted in the browser. I'll leave a link to local storage documentation in the description for you to check out. We can begin by creating a new method that will store our data into the local storage. We will want to store the token and the expiration time to ensure the user stays logged in if they're within that one hour time frame and have not clicked log out. I'll create a method store login details that accepts the token of type string and the expiration date property of type date. So we're not passing in the expires in value itself, rather the exact time the token will be expiring. Then when we relaunch our application within the browser, we can recalculate the remaining seconds of the session before we then call that logout function automatically. We can store our values in the local storage using the built-in local storage API and calling the setItem method. This will accept a key and value that will be persisted into the browser. So I'll do this once for token and passing in the token. And then again for the expires in property, passing in the value as type ISO string. And the ISO string is a serialized version of our date. So we're going to use this method to persist to the local storage after we log in and the token has been created along with the expiration date. So the expiration date can be obtained by creating a new date object, which will contain the current date and time. Then we can create a new constant of the expires date and passing in the current date with the get time method and adding the number of milliseconds on as the expires in value multiplied by 1000. We can then pass this dot token and the expires date into the store login details method to persist the values into local storage. I'll create an inverse method to remove these and I'm just going to call this method clear login details and this method will use the built-in remove item from the local storage API passing in the key of token and also the key of expires in and this method is going to be called whenever we log out. So if I open the application, we can now test our local storage by opening up the developer console and navigating to the local storage tab. And this will show us the token and expires in properties updated as we log in and then also updated as we log out. Our local storage now contains the data we store upon the authentication and we'll remove it once we log out. The very final part to using local storage is to automatically authenticate our user when we load the page if the token is available 
and if it is not expired. So from a high level, whenever our application is loaded, we want to check if the local storage contains a token that is not expired. Then we want to automatically assign them values within our application if they're available. So I'm going to create a new method called get local storage data. And this is going to return a JSON object of our token and the expires in value. This method will be called whenever the app.component file is created, so whenever our application is loaded. And then within this method, I'll obtain the token with local storage.getItem, passing in token for the token, and expires in for the expires in property. If either of these are empty, I'll send an empty response back from this method. I can check whether either of these are empty with an if statement, where we're saying if the token or the expires in value are empty. If, however, both are present, I want to return a JSON response with the token and the expires in as a new date object. So I'm just going to create this by passing in new date and then the expires in date as an argument. The get local storage data method is going to be used by a slightly higher level method that is going to be taking that data and assigning it within our application. So I'm going to call this method authenticate from local storage. So within authenticate from local storage, I'll first obtain the local storage data as we've just defined into a constant called local storage data. We now need to verify that the token has not expired and if it hasn't, then we can update the token and the expires in properties of our application. Uh, so first, let's check that the expiration date is not invalid and is therefore in the future. I'll create a new constant called now with new date and create a new constant called the expires in date is calculated by the local storage data expiration date dot get time value minus the now dot get time value. Uh, so now dot get time will provide an integer which is the number of milliseconds the current present moment is from January 1st, 1970. And the expiration dot get time does the exact same thing. However, that will be from January 1st, 1970 all the way up to the expiration date. So if the expiration date is greater than now, we would expect this value to be positive. I'll create a new if block where expires in is positive, where we can set this dot token as equal to the local storage data Dot token. We will also want to set is authenticated to true and also broadcast a true boolean in the authenticated subscription. Lastly, I'll also update the logout timer within the set timer method, passing in the value of the expires in value, but then we want to divide that by 1000 to convert it from milliseconds to seconds. So now that our auth service is updated, and just before we start our application, I'm going to make one small change to our header component TS file. So in the ng on init function, you can see our subscription to the authenticated sub in the auth service, which will then set the user authenticated value as equal to the status. The problem we have is that when we restart our application, the app component will be loaded first, and that will be sending out this user authenticated sub message. However, the header component might not always be loaded. So what I'm going to do is also set the user authenticated value as equal to the auth service get is authenticated boolean. And this way we're not just relying on the subscription to tell us whether the, the user is logged in or not. And when we load the header component, it will also take it from the boolean of is authenticated from our auth service. We'll run our authenticate from local storage method when the application starts by implementing the on init lifecycle hook in the app.component file. And then I'm going to inject the auth service into a constructor. And then I'm going to call the authenticate from local storage method. Now, if I restart our application and log in, we can close the window and we can reopen the window and we can see that the page is still logged in and that the local storage contains our token and expiration. So that concludes this video on how we can persist user details within the browser, how we can create a logout functionality that also expires after a specified time within the code, 
and it also concludes the tutorial on how you can create and use authentication with MongoDB. So thank you so much for watching this video and as always please leave a comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more.